Hey everybody, it's Candace from The Watering Hole. Um, coming to you with yet another video of 12 days of giveaways from The Watering Hole, or as we've been calling it, Give Miss Thanks to Nisha. Um, the 12 days of giveaways we've covered, um, well actually yesterday we had a really awesome video from Monifa, the co-founder of The Watering Hole, who talked about poeting while parenting, and it I mean, if you didn't see it, please scroll down on this page on the Watering Holes uh, page to see it. It's, I'm sure it will resonate with you, especially if you're a parent. Tomorrow, we're having um, from Jennifer tips for de-depressing during the holidays. Um, for me today, I'm doing tips for revising poetry. So, uh, we can go ahead and get to it. Um, these Tips clearly uh, are specifically for poets, um, as, and unlike our other ones, which have been for artists or just people in general who want to fix their cover letters or their bios or whatever. So my first number one tip is know your purpose. Know whether you are writing for self-expression. Let me turn this off. So my sound will be a little bit better. Know whether you're writing for self-expression, um, for just getting it on the page, um, whether you are really wanting to share it or you, you, I mean, just know what your purpose is. Some people only write for themselves and they share it with other people, but it's like they're in this space where it's like, I like my poetry and it doesn't really matter what other people say and that's cool in that case you really don't need to revise because you've done what you wanted to do if it's therapeutic if it's self-expression you've done what you wanted to do you don't really need to revise if you are trying to publish or compete with the poetry um, or if you just want to grow in the craft then that's when you get into the revision area so knowing your purpose is key that's tip number one number two and People said this to me a whole bunch when I was first starting out, um, said it to other people, and it sounds like an insult every single time, but it's really not. Tip number two is read, 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 or listen, listen, listen. If you are not doing either of those, if you're not YouTubing your favorite artists and finding new artists on a regular basis, whatever that is for you, if you are not reading new artists on a regular basis, then you cannot grow the way you imagine growing in your craft. Um, I find this really interesting because in any under, other industry, it would sound utterly ridiculous. If you heard a musician or a, an engineer or a basketball player say, yeah, 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 I rap, but you know, I don't listen to nobody's rap. I don't really want anybody influencing my art. You know, <laughs> the first question people ask is like, what rappers influence you? What artists influence you? What basketball players influence you? You cannot have a conversation as an interviewer with Allen Iverson and start start with just him as if he formed himself out of a vacuum. You have to start with like Allen, AI, homie, whatever. <laughs> Who influenced you? And he's going to be like, man, magic with the no look, you know, pass our bird or whatever, whatever. And then, and then after he goes through the list of his influences, then you get to this little inside out crossover. Uh, uh, but you can't get there without starting back here. And the same thing is true for every other industry. The only person who got away with being great and not listening to music is Mozart, who was deaf. Like you, he's the only one. Everybody else had to do it. And he was probably feeling vibrations or I don't know, but whatever. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I'm going to say that you may not be on that le level as he was, you might be on, you know, filled with potential and inspiration and all that stuff that we like to talk about. And then this will be the thing that will push you further, right? Reading, reading, writing, listening, 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 way more than you are writing. And I mean, if you, if you write every day, that's, that's fantastic actually, but make sure you get that reading and listening in. Um, that's tip number two. 
Um, so don't rely on your own genius and make sure you know who's influencing your art because it, you are being influenced. Even if your thing is, I don't want anybody, you know, I don't want to bite anybody that like, you're being influenced by somebody's art and you need to make sure it's not Dr. Seuss unless you are a children's book author. That's what you need to make sure of. Uh, tip number three, um, this is something that helps me to like really ground myself in a moment or a scene or whatever. It's knowing who the speaker of the poem is and who is being spoken to. Um, I actually got this tip from Iodele Heath a few years ago. And even if you don't state it in your poem, it clarifies your vision as an artist and it clarifies it for the reader. And the reader picks up these hints about who this person who's being spoken to or doing the speaking might be. So it's just um, in terms of like really grounding you in specifics, knowing who the speaker is, knowing who's being spoken to, there are certain things that you would say to a specific person, not like if you think of your audience as the world or as Trump voters or as a best friend or one of your best friends, there are certain things, I mean, it just, those are so vague. Even one of your best friends is just so vague. You can flip that and to say, instead of the world, you imagine you're speaking to your little brother. Instead of Trump voters, you are speaking to Susan from accounting. Instead of a best friend, you are speaking to Felicia Presley, who was your best friend back in elementary school, like that narrow, right? And there are certain things that you will say to that person that you won't say to other people. And that helps ground the poem and make it so unique and resonant to a wider audience. It, the resonance comes through the specificity. Um, even if we're thinking about G. Yamazawa's poem, Dear Grandmother, it could have started, I don't know, I haven't asked him, that, him this. I try to teach him as often as I can in my classes, but he, it could have started easily as a poem about grandmothers or a poem about his grandmother but then to be able to f narrow that just a little bit and say it's a poem where he is speaking to his grandmother oh oh then it just sets the thing off he gets to incorporate languages that he would not have incorporated otherwise scenes memories all this stuff her memories like he gets to invoke all these things um by the way TWH t-shirt. I think I write. I publish. These are running out actually. So if you want one, head to the website and get one. They're pretty awesome. I love mine. Um, every time I wear them, wear it, somebody is always like, wait, 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 what's that about? What is that? What do you do? So I really like it. And it's a v-neck, ladies. If you want a v-neck. Fellas, you can get a v-neck if you want to. But um, we have c-necks too for guys who want a c-neck. Um, tip number four. Treat the poem like a jigsaw. I love, love, love this tip. When I when people send me poetry, um, first of all, I ask like, I ask a bunch of questions before I, I look at anybody's poems. Like, how many times are you willing to revise it? How much work have you put in it, into it already? Uh, what do you want to achieve from me reading it? What are you specifically trying to prove? What are you worried about? All this other stuff. They have to write me a paragraph explaining these things before I just read it. So just to put that out there so that people don't, don't just start sending me manuscripts. But when I get somebody's poems, I don't know. I don't know. But I feel like this is also one of Roger Bonaire Agard's superpowers. He did this a couple of years ago at the retreat with one of Monifa's poems, I believe. And where he just jigsawed that thing. And ever since I've been like, oh, jigsaw. So to explain what it is finally, you're just looking at the poem, looking at the stanzas, how how it is arranged and just moving it around the page. Just um, like you're, like when you play Scrabble, if you could, like just when you play Scrabble online and you kind of just shuffle the tiles to see what words appear that you don't, weren't anticipating appearing. And that, doing that with a poem and it's like, Oh, oh, what if we start with this third stanza? What if we break this stanza apart? What if we rearrange these lines? What if we start from the end and go down? I mean, it is so cool. Just do it. Just trust me. I know I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd in many different ways, but this I am right about. I know I'm right about. It's so cool. It's cool. 
I'm right about that part. The part of it being cool too. Like if you walking down the street, you can be like, yeah, I jigsaw. I, I treat my poems like a jigsaw puzzle. Trust me. <laughs> street cred all day. Um, but yeah, and then like there are certain things that you can do as you're jigsawing it. Like um, move one of your strongest lines or the strongest line to the beginning. What happens when you start with the strongest line of the poem, even if it's no longer linear? Like, ugh, a poem that's not linear that you kind of, oh, oh my gosh. Anyway, all I'm saying is that would be cool. The, let me stop and move on to the final tip. Experiment with somebody else's style. Tip number five is experiment with somebody else's style. I'm not saying bite their words, don't steal their words. You don't have to sample it, none of that. But um, to put yourself, like whatever poet you've been reading a lot or listening to a lot rewriting your poem in the style of that other poem will teach you something about what is currently working and not working in your poem what is working and not working in their poem and it just puts you in a place a different kind of analytical stance when you're thinking about the strategy of putting these words together or building whatever formula you need to build for your poem for it to work rhetorically on the stage or on the page so that's my final tip. Um, I have, yeah, quick review, just in case this is long. Know your purpose. Know why you are writing. Read, 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 read. Listen, 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 listen. Know who is speaking and who is being spoken to. Treat it like a jigsaw puzzle and experiment with somebody else's style. Those are my five tips for revising. And if you need more help or anything like that, please hit me up. I don't, I'm not volunteering to read any manuscripts right now. Everything is crazy and busy. We're gearing up for the retreat, the watering hole retreat, which is every year um, at the end of December to kick off the new year in January. Um, so we're doing all of that. But listen, you can go to our website and subscribe to the a pop-up will come up if you subscribe i'll send you a couple more tips i have actually 10 write, written down i gave you five of them i can send you the rest um if you go subscribe if you're already subscribed just hit us um with an email twh tribe at twh poetry.org and i will let me know that you're already subscribed but you want the tips and i can send them to you that way um Please go and check out our t-shirts. We have a new line of t-shirts. They are super sexy. They are navy blue, like that, uh, it's not black. You know, when you want a neutral, but not black or white, it's that navy that can give you that neutral, semi-neutral kind of thing. And it, there, it has our new logo on it. We have razor backs, oh, which are so hot. Those are charcoal. We have I do Baldwin and I am Lord in reverence to James Baldwin and the Audre Lord. All of those are super hot. Yo, please go look at them. It's just look at them. Just look at them. You don't have to buy anything. I just want you to see what we did. Oh, it's all cute. Um, other than that, keep it locked on our page because we're going to be doing this every day until um, Christmas Eve and then we come back the day after Christmas with live videos from the watering hole It's going to be so hot. So I look forward to seeing you guys there and thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching the video. Bye